Welcome to part two of our conversation about spirit guides with Catherine Rogers. Does that just make some people unguidable? I mean, no matter what, the, the guide's just sitting there hitting their head against but the wall. here's the thing. Are they not? Are, it, 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 I don't think it's that they're unguidable. I think it's that they're just, they're completely closed off to listening, some of them. Mm-hmm. Because when you look at these people, the, the guides have given them messages. And it may, even if it's not within, you know, their own consciousness or their their own, um, you know, maybe they're not hearing the guides, you know, on an on a, um, ethereal type of way. But, you know, throughout their life, they will have had contact with usually drug counselors, police, mm-hmm. friends, family that have tried to guide them. You know, and if you want to look at them as like earth angels or even people that have tried to, maybe even the random person on the street that picked them up if they were, you know, drunk on a sidewalk and and guided them towards a shelter, right? Like when you look at that, you know, those, the, the help is there. You know, our guides brought these people in for a reason to help us. But, you know, at some point, if you're not willing to listen or if you're not willing to take you know, the help that is being given to you. And you'll find that, unfortunately, you know, these people tend to, um, it it usually doesn't have a good outcome, Mm -hmm. right? It usually does not have a good outcome to it. But, you know, and then people ask, well, how can a child be born to an alcoholic? And then they get a crappy life too. But at the same time, if you look at the child's life, a lot of times, you know, people do come in through for that child too you know hey we can help you here we can help you there maybe we can you know guide you toward this or guide you towards that and again it's going to be up to that child you know as to accept the help or you know to take whatever it is Uh, so many times we're willing to we want to blame everybody around us right sure but sometimes it's a matter of listening to our own intuition you you know and i'm going to say this with 90 percent of the time because there's always going to be that one person that says but I did this or I did that and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. You know, but we also have to look at our core self and how are we thinking and what are we projecting out into the universe? If we're stuck in a, in a place of just repeating those same lessons within our mind, it's like saying, I only attract drunks. Well, if we change that around and say, look at, you know what? I deserve this and this is what I'm going to attract. So I'm going to attract somebody, you know, who can take care of themselves, somebody with a decent job, somebody, you know, who has a good course, you know, strong self, somebody who's loyal, somebody who's faithful. And then we keep projecting towards that element. This is what we're going to be led towards, right? But we have to have that belief within ourselves. And this is where our guides and our spirit team do come in to help. And this is also where too, is that even if our guides may not have the knowledge or the ability to particularly guide us, they can call in, you know, help. And this is where, you know, let's say a guide that had alcoholic knowledge could come through and help guide you towards that. So that help is there, the door is opened. But do we listen? And that's yeah. where, you know, there's so many people. If you look at, you know, if you look at some of our most famous, you know, sports athletes, they came from crappy, you know, beginnings, mm-hmm. right? Alcoholic parent or, you know, maybe dirt poor or poverty. You know, some of them, although did have very strong parental figures, you know, or very strong parental, um, you know, single parents. They might have grown up in poverty, but they were brought to you know, and they were given that option. They could sit there and go, well, I'm born in poverty, so I have no chance. And they could sit there and wallow in that, or they could look and go, you know what? I got a basketball and I got a hoop. Mm -hmm. I enjoy this. This is something that I'm good at. Damn, I'm going to go for it. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and so ultimately, you know, those choices and those opportunities are usually presented to us. But then a lot of people will say, well, what about the kids in, you know, third world countries that are starving? Well, the thing is, you know, sometimes humans and souls, and this is where we go back into humans and souls making a choice, right? And I'm not, I'm not putting any blame on any children. I do not mean it like that. I mean, starvation and hunger, but it does bring us awareness too, right? And we do try you know, especially, you know, in this later part of, you know, the last century and into here is we do try to bring, um, you know, a better uh, way of living towards people in that third world, 
you know, energy, right? But sometimes we do need souls to pass away or to have that brief life on earth to bring that awareness to things. The the spirit guides themselves, were they once living people that are now, yeah. this is their job? You know, it's interesting that you asked that because I actually had a, a reading with a lady not very long ago. And not very often do spirits really kind of come in and say, look at, you know what, I'll be here, you know, as, as a, you know, when you ask, because people always say, you know, is my so-and-so with me or is this person still with me? They are, you know, but they are, they got other things to do too. Like they're not just hanging around you. Like, the, you know, they have an opportunity to go, you know, do other things. And it was interesting because I did have a reading with this lady whose um, ex-husband, you know, she was asking about him and he he was very determined that he really wanted to become a guide because of his experiences in his own life. Mm -hmm. And and he was given that opportunity. And I do feel that as souls, we are given that opportunity to do so. And I feel like this is sometimes, too, is why our spirit team might not know everything. Right. Because they may be newer to that spirit world right mm -hmm. but they're going to be there as your guides as your i mean they you know they're not be all know all right mm -hmm. and this is why they might need to bring in other people or other guides i guess is the best way to say it other guides to help with particular things but those guides might not you know stay with you for your whole life they're going to come in help you know guide you towards whatever it is that you want to learn maybe give you the right opportunities open some doors for you if you're willing to take it and then they're kind of you know off again right then they go and help out another soul or another person but your guide team um i do feel that your guide team you know are of a human soul now angels are different they they are not um they are not human souls right they, they they're the whole different i guess species altogether mm -hmm. <laughs> but your guide team are are past humans and i mean they could be from you know a thousand years ago maybe they've helped out many souls right yeah maybe some are newer and you're you might be the first soul that they're helping out but that doesn't mean that they're left completely helpless mm -hmm. right because they are going to have usually most people they don't just have one guide they usually have a couple okay. or two or three from what i've seen sure. now this is only you know within the readings or when i've tapped into people's energy in in that way right sure do we all have the opportunity or the option when we pass to to say, okay, I'm going to go be a guide now? Or is there a certain level of learning and, and advancing ourselves? I think ourselves? there's honestly a certain level of learning. Like, for instance, let's say, let's say for the human that, um, let's just go back into relationships again. So let's go, you know, to that human that kept accepting you know, um, abusive or alcoholic or substance abuse type of relationships, you know, relationships that weren't healthy. They cannot how, you know, how on, you know, just because you pass doesn't mean that you have all the knowledge, mm -hmm. you know, I, I'm sure to some that we we tend to think that, but, you know, they, they have to go through a learning lesson too. Now, I guess it would really depend on your beliefs about reincarnation and, and whatever, mm -hmm. but, or would they be a guide, maybe possibly like a, a guide in training, I guess would be the best way to say it. I'm not sure. But, you know, a guide that um, hasn't learned some of the lessons that they can help with or come to an understanding or a realization of what it is that they did wrong. Let's say they continue to always, you know, stay in abusive relationships or they, that basically that's saying that they don't have the confidence within themselves to, you know, go a different path or to go a different route. So it's going to be very hard when they pass over. They're still going to have that same mentality or that same emotional response to things. So for them to be able to guide somebody throughout their life, that's going to be very difficult to do, right? That you're sure. not going to get the best yeah. Um, yeah, advice from somebody who's only dated alcoholics, right? Like yeah. that's that you're going to be like, okay, like what? And, and that that's where I wonder what sometimes. Advice are you that's where I wonder sometimes if you know the guide has the best of intentions, but it, a lot of people have best of intentions, but sometimes just make you know wrong choices. Um, that, right. That's why I'm wondering if some of that ever 
does it slip through the cracks sometimes? Yeah, and, I don't. I honestly don't think so yeah. because when we look at, you know, if we look at God or you know whatever you know term you want to use, whether it's you know whether it's Allah or Jehovah or whether it's you know the universe or spirit or higher self, however we want to you know phrase that. Um, it really is, you know, um, ultimately supposed to be in the perfect condition, right? Sure. Like it, it's, it, you know, there's a perfect alignment, whether we understand that alignment or not. But, um, you know, we're not going to be given a guide who is. Now, I guess the best way to explain it, when I did read on this woman and I was looking at her ex-husband, by the time he was ready to pass, he had a lot of knowledge about his experiences. So he also understood that those experiences that he had gone through were for a lesson. So he understood that. Like, and this is before he passed away. He he looked back at lots of parts of his life and understood you know, where he could have done better, where he could have, you know, it, it was like, it was taking responsibility for the mistakes of his life. And a lot of people don't take responsibility, mm -hmm. right? But when we do start to take responsibility for our personal guidance or our personal life, this is where things really change. And this is, you know, this is like when we can look back and instead of blaming, um, Okay, again, going in, uh, it's just so easy to hit on relationships, I guess. I'm just going to go back to sure, that no. again. <laughs> but, but, you know, let's say for the woman that continues to date or the man that continues to date people that, you know, are in this behavior, right? A lot of times, what do they do? Well, my buddies keep taking me to the bar. Okay, well, now you just blamed your buddies. Yeah. Right? Well, the, the worst is down the street, so it's easy. <laughs> now you're blaming the bar, right? Sure. Or, you know, like what else are, what else are you going to blame? Do you want to blame the sidewalk for actually, you know, having a path to mm -hmm. bar? Like where, where are you going to stop and take responsibility for yourself? Sure. And this is what we have to do. And this is where, you know, when we t start taking responsibility, if, and I, I tell a lot of people, especially when I'm looking into relationship readings or I'm doing a reading on relationships and. And I'll say, well, where's your responsibility? Like if you take a step back and if you look at a relationship in a 3D realm, okay, and, and pretend that you're the outsider looking in as to where that, that relationship started to deteriorate or even perhaps that last fight and stand back as an outsider and replay that argument or that fight in your mind, you're going to start to see not only where this person um, you know, did what they did, but you're going to see what you did why and why you did it. And you're going to see those different choices that you had throughout that argument or throughout that conversation or whatever it was. And when you stop and take a look and you look at those um, issues in a responsible manner, not placing blame upon yourself or even placing blame upon the other person, but it's responsibility, yeah. right? And when you take responsibility for this and you look at it in a clear point of view, you can usually see where you could have done better or maybe perhaps, you know, where the other person could have done better. But again, it's taking responsibility for all of it and then take a step back and forgive yourself because we are only human. Ultimately, none of us have all of the knowledge, right? None of us have all of the insight. But you know, we do start to learn it when we take that step back and look at it in a different perspective. And when we look at things in a non-ego way, and if we can look at, let's say, an argument that we had with somebody in a, you know, um, an objective type of way, we can sit back and go, oh, yeah, I remember. See, when I said that, I could have said something completely different, mm -hmm. right? Or I could have reacted in a different way and and that's where we go okay now i've learned i've learned a lesson and i forgive myself for it and i'm going to allow myself to you know move on whether this is going to be this relationship or another relationship i'm taking responsibility for my actions that wraps up part two of our conversation about spirit guides with Catherine Rogers. Big thank you to her for joining us in the program today. Thank you to you for supporting us and keeping us on the air. We would not exist without you. Until next time, for all of us at The Grave Talks, I'm Tony Brisky. Thanks for listening.